Destiny 2 has a ton of exotic weapons, and more are added every single season. Some of these are considered to be meta picks by the community that almost everyone uses on a regular basis, but there's also a lot of hidden gems out there that don't get the love they probably deserve. Let's start with a bow that recently received a substantial buff. Wishender is an exotic bow earned from completing a lengthy quest in the Shattered Throne dungeon in the Dreaming City. When it's fully drawn, the bow lets you see through walls just like you have wall hacks. This is pretty useful in PvP, but in PvE it's not the most useful perk in the world. If this was the only thing that the bow did, it would feel pretty underwhelming. However, it recently had its exotic perk changed. In addition to its wall hack ability, it can now pierce enemy shields and it has anti-barrier arrows which allow it to easily pierce the shield bubbles from barrier champions. It benefited a while back when Bungie buffed the damage output on exotic primary weapons and now with the ability to defeat barrier champions without even needing to slot an anti-barrier mod in your gloves, this bow is really powerful in PvE. I think it could become a very popular choice in Grandmaster Nightfalls this season. It's a great contender to try out in your endgame PvE builds. Speaking of endgame content, our next gun is a somewhat niche pick. However, due to the return of anti-barrier sniper rifle as a seasonal mod, Borealis is a decent choice for those wanting to conquer Grandmaster Nightfalls this season. Borealis has the exotic perk The Fundamentals which it shares with the auto rifle Hardlight. This allows you to switch to whichever elemental alignment you want just by holding the reload button. In Grandmaster Nightfalls, being able to quickly switch to whichever element you need to break those annoying enemy shields can be invaluable. Adding Anti-Barrier Sniper into the mix will allow you to shatter shields left and right making Borealis a solid choice. It's just too bad that the Anti-Barrier Sniper mod is so expensive to equip. I really hope that someday Bungie reduces the cost of this kind of mod so it becomes a lot easier to fit it into our builds. Borealis also gets some major style points with the ornaments available. These are some of the cleanest looking weapon models in the entire game. Before we get to the next weapon on the list, I want to quickly thank PUBG Mobile for sponsoring this video. I've been playing it for the past few days and I've been really impressed so far. PUBG Mobile is the most popular free to play battle royale game on mobile right now with more than 50 million daily active players. They've had over 1 billion total downloads and after playing a few matches it's clear to see why. The controls feel very intuitive and easy to pick up which is extremely important for a mobile FPS game to feel good to play. I found that switching and firing weapons, moving around, and consuming items is pretty simple and fun. Probably the most important thing though, especially for battle royale cell games, is that the looting is very fast and nearly automatic. You don't need to spend a ton of time in the menus, and items that you find on the ground or when looting chests are easily equipped. You can play as a solo, in duos, or in squads, and there are also a lot of other game modes to check out like Weapon Master, Arcade, Sniper Training, Team Deathmatch, and more. The newest map is Noosa, which is a smaller style map and it leads to more frequent gunfights. This also means that the games are a bit faster on average. It features some new content like burnable houses, destructible water tanks, and a tactical crossbow. PUBG Mobile also has some really fun collabs with other top IPs. It features skins and outfits from The Boys, Spider-Man, Tesla, Lamborghini, and even Baby Shark. There are 5 other maps to choose from as well which each have some unique features. My favorite one right now is probably Aaron Gale which feels right at home to play. If you want to give it a try, check out my link in the description and test your skills on the new map. Continuing with the theme of endgame content, Bastion is a weapon that you probably haven't thought about a whole lot recently. With the intrinsic ability to stun unstoppable champions, this weapon has some serious potential for Grandmaster Nightfalls and solo loss sectors. While it does require you to get close to the champions to stun them, once they are stunned you can burn through them pretty quickly. Since Bastion has the ability to beat unstoppable champions without even equipping a mod, it can open up slots for other champion mod choices and provides a really nice way to deal with all three kinds of champions by yourself. In situations where you need to keep your team alive, a healer build on Warlock can be undeniably useful. The hand cannon Lumina is probably the closest thing you can get in Destiny to being a true support player. When combined with a few choice perks and exotics, this build can let you carry your team through content that might otherwise have them spending a lot of time watching that death screen. Lumina provides an enormous damage boost when you buff your teammates. It's also a mobile damage boost unlike a Well of Radiance or an Empowering Rift that requires you to stand in basically the same spot to deal that bonus damage. This video is more focused on weapons, but I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the exotic leg armor for Warlock's Boots of the Assembler. When combined with Lumina, these boots heal and buff your team automatically, turning Lumina into a great choice that doesn't get enough attention from the community. Next on our list is Destiny's version of a toaster. Yotun is an exotic fuse rifle that has the unique ability to fire bolts to track your targets, and the tracking can be quite generous. It's known mostly on the PvP side of things as a weapon that's really frustrating to die to, but this weapon is surprisingly good in PvE as well. The catalyst gives the weapon a faster charge time and spreads scorch to nearby enemies. This makes it a very good choice for people wanting a weapon to pair with a Solar 3.0 build. It's not the best weapon in the game by any stretch, but it's pretty fun to use and it does pair really well with Solar builds. The sidearms aren't quite as popular today as they were a few seasons ago in PvE. 
SMGs do pretty much anything that a sidearm can do and tend to be the go-to option for players in close range battles. That said, the Traveler's Chosen can be very useful in some niche builds. The exotic perk allows you to refresh your abilities after killing enemies, which can be extremely useful. The more stacks of Gathering Light you collect, the more ability energy you'll get from holding the reload button. Also, these stacks of Gathering Light improve your weapon's performance thanks to the perk Gift of the Traveler. So before you dump your stacks, if you're already full on ability energy, you might want to just enjoy that improved weapon feel. I've had a lot of success using this on my Arc 3.0 Titan, running the Traveler's Chosen in a modified Heart of Inmost Light build. It's a really fun build to try in lower level content, especially when you just want to spam as many abilities as possible. I'm not sure exactly how well this would hold up in Grandmaster Nightfalls or Master Raids, but I do recommend trying it if you're just looking to change up your regular build. I'm going to tie these next two weapons together since they effectively fill the same niche. Sunshot and Graviton Lance are both really fun weapons with the ability to clear rooms in an instant. While these weapons might not be the focus of the meta anymore, they are still very good options for that early to mid game content and remain solid choices for even end game content depending on the season. Unstoppable Pulse Rifle is a mod up for grabs this season, so don't overlook the Graviton Lance for GMs or Master Lost Sectors. It can pair really nicely with some Void 3.0 builds. And Sunshot can be absolutely amazing for Solar 3.0 builds. It's always fun to see those chaining explosions. Be sure to also spend some time leveling up the Sunshot Catalyst as it makes the gun feel so much better to use. Next on our list is another weapon that pairs really well with Solar 3.0 builds. The hipfire ability on Skyburner's Oath can apply Scorch to targets. With enough stacks, you can cause enemies to ignite and blow up an entire room. The Scout Rifle also intrinsically deals extra damage to Cabal and specifically can penetrate through those annoying failing shields. Plus, it can be used with the Anti-Barrier Scout Rifle mod this season to bust through those annoying champion shields. For endgame content that requires solar damage and includes any Cabal enemies, the Skyburner's Oath is definitely a Scout Rifle worth trying. Trace Rifles have been long overdue for a little bit of love in PvE, but unfortunately they still aren't used that much today outside of some niche builds. However, Aedra Scepter might just be the option that Stasis users have been looking for. With the correct mods equipped, Trace Rifles can be used almost like primary weapons which allows Aedra Scepter to fit into some really fun builds. It does a fantastic job of freezing and then shattering enemies and it's perfect for Stasis Ag Clear. The Catalyst allows you to overcharge your weapon by consuming some of your super energy to provide a huge damage buff. This makes the gun really dish out some serious damage. You can also pair it with the Mantle of Battle Harmony on a Stasis Warlock to get that super energy back faster with kills. And this will provide a smaller damage buff when your super is full. So you can use the base beam to kill those red bar enemies and build up your super, then get a nice damage buff until you come across a really tanky enemy and then burn some of that super to melt it even faster. It's a really fun gameplay loop that's worth spending some time with in PvE. Collective Obligation is the exotic pulse rifle that drops from the bow of the Disciple Raid. Compared to some of the other raid exotics, this one definitely felt a bit lackluster at least at launch. It did however get some really nice buffs in a recent patch and now the gun is feeling much more viable in many PvE activities. It has some cool use cases in void builds, essentially giving you infinite uptime on any of the void debuffs. Anytime you shoot an enemy that's suppressed, weakened, or volatile, the gun will leech those debuffs off of the target and then store them. Then you can hold the reload button to swap modes and then the next targets you hit will have those same debuffs applied. This playstyle is definitely niche, but it's pretty fun to pull off and you can set up some builds that really benefit from the cycle of leeching and then applying those debuffs. By the way, the ornament in Finality is nearly mandatory to be able to see your target clearly. This one almost feels like pay to win. Hawkmoon gets a lot of love in PvP for its ability to one-shot enemies even with a body shot, but it's no slouch in PvE either. The damage that the last bullet deals when you've stacked up Paracausal Charge can dish out some incredible damage to targets. If you can land your precision shots in PvE, the Hawkmoon will handsomely reward your efforts. In seasons where artifact mods can give hand cannons extra abilities against champions, this hand cannon is definitely worth testing out. Another hand cannon worth using in PvE these days is Malfeasance. It's always been an interesting choice thanks to its exotic perk that causes targets to explode after landing 5 hits, but it recently got even more powerful because the explosion effect has an intrinsic benefit against unstoppable champions. When the explosion procs, it will stagger the unstoppable champion so it can easily be taken out. This is even more powerful against taken enemies because Malfeasance has a built-in damage bonus against them. And if you pair it with the Hunter Boots Lucky Pants, you can deal some additional damage with the exotic perk Illegally Modded Holster. Perhaps the king of underrated exotics is the Huckleberry. This exotic SMG received a 40% damage increase during the Witch Queen alongside a buff to all the other exotic primaries in PvE. I'm telling you, this gun is insanely slept on. It absolutely shreds in PvE, and if you're looking for an exotic primary to round out your build, I cannot recommend the Huckleberry enough. It's the only gun in the game that's retained the original values of Rampage from when Destiny 2 first launched which are substantially more generous than the versions of Rampage we have today on every other weapon. 
This gun lets you clear entire rooms with ease, and the more you kill, the better the gun gets. The catalyst gives you the ability to fully reload the magazine on kill, which means that as long as you're killing enemies, you don't even need to reload. And if you ever do need to reload, you're going to be pleased with one of the most satisfying reload animations in the entire game. Seriously, try this gun out and thank me later. Let me know in the comments which of these weapons do you think is the most slept on. And up next, check out my video on 17 exotic combos in Destiny 2 that you need to try. It's linked on screen and in the description.